let me remind you what does what does the catechism of the catholic church speaks about prayer life let's read catechism of the catholic church 2725 paragraph number 2725 let's read prayer is both a gift of grace prayer is both a gift of grace and a determined response on our part and a determined response on our part it always presupposes effort it always presupposes effort the great figures of prayer of the old covenant the great figures of prayer of the old covenant before christ before christ as well as the mother of god as well as the mother of god the saints the saints and he himself and he himself all teaches this all teaches this what is that they teach they teach prayer is a battle prayer is a battle praise the lord i praise the lord prayer is a battle prayer is a battle against whom against whom let's read against ourselves against ourselves and against the wiles of the tempter and against the wiles of the tempter who does all who does all he can he can to turn man away from prayer to turn man away from away prayer away from away from union with god union with god praise the lord praise the lord my dear friends this is very very important point everybody including jesus and everyone says prayer is a battle is not a battle against god or anyone battle against ourselves we read in the old testament about jacob wrestling against wrestling with god against himself wrestling with the help of god against himself the same way prayer is a battle against oneself so prayer means so we are not trying to please god through our prayer we don't need to please god god is already pleased then why do we pray by praying we are destroying our selfishness ego there are so many gods in us we all know how did god save israelites from egypt when god came to destroy when god came to save israelites from egypt egyptians said moses came and spoke to pharaoh and said send my people god our god said send my people then pharaoh said who is your god who cares get out so this is what pharaoh said then moses got so insulted moses came and told god god they don't mind us they don't even listen to us they don't even value you then god said i'm going to punish their gods because they depend on some gods there are 10 gods whom they depend on since they depend on these 10 gods they are so they think they are powerful therefore they don't value yahweh therefore god said i am going to cut off one by one all these gods of his egyptians and that is how the 10 plagues were sent against the 10 gods of egyptians they had mainly 10 gods nile river was a god sky was a god animals were god sun was a god and pharaoh himself is god so 10 gods one by one god was cutting off all these gods and the last god was pharaoh and he himself lost his son and all the children then he also became helpless and then the egyptians came to know the god of israel is more powerful than all their gods and that is when they sent israelites out they said okay you go you are dangerous people because your god is so powerful and that is why they got deliverance that means the what happened in egypt is a battle battle, battle against whom battle against themselves their own country there are so many inside gods god was destroying them through battle so when i am standing here i have so many gods in me through my prayer life i am destroying these gods in me and start believing jesus christ as only one god and that is what the effect of prayer so that is why bible says prayer is a battle against ourselves there are ego selfishness self centeredness desire for money fame name power position desire for lust and lack gluttony and so many gods inside through prayer we will overcome through prayer we'll destroy this tempter through prayer we'll suppress and destroy all the ego selfishness self centeredness pride everything one by one we'll destroy it so that should be the prayer and that is the diff- effect of the prayer that should be the effect of prayer if that is not happening in your prayer life then you are not praying some people they one side they are praying so much another side their behavior is still same that means you are not praying 
the real prayer life is not taking place that is why catechism of the catholic church says all the in the whole bible it says prayer is a battle against whom against ourselves against the wiles of the tempter who does all he can to turn man away from prayer away from union with god there are so many things which are blocking us from union with god sometimes ego blocking us desire for money blocking us wrong relationship blocking us some attachment to the world blocking us we have to destroy this unless we destroy these small small gods which we are depending on our prayer life is useless the prayer life is only for this not to please god we don't need to please god god is already pleased therefore we read pray we pray as we live we pray as we live because we live as we pray because we live as we pray it's very important we pray as we live because we live as we pray if you really want to live then you have to pray and we pray as we are going living so it's very important point we pray as we live because we live as we pray if we do not want to act habitually if we do not want to act habitually according to the spirit of christ according to the spirit of christ neither can we pray habitually in his name neither can we pray habitually in his name praise the lord praise the lord if you are not planning to lead a spiritual life then you cannot pray if you really don't want to have a spiritual life there are people who say oh i don't want to pray i don't want to uh, love god you know you don't have attachment to god then you will not pray you will pray only for a for a because you are compelled to pray the spiritual battle of the christians new life is inseparable from the battle of prayer the spiritual battle of the christians new life is inseparable from the battle of prayer any christian growing in spiritual life will grow in bad prayer if you are not praying enough that means you are not growing enough let's continue reflecting about the prayer life what does what does the catechism of the catholic church teaches about the prayer life we also saw already prayer is a battle against our souls through battle that is why sometimes the lord says continue praying why because we have to defeat ourselves ego selfishness pride the moment this defeat this ego and all these things blessings which are there just above you will be released so through prayer we are not trying to change god we are changing ourselves even catechism of the catholic church says that through prayer we are changing ourselves when we are changed all the promises in the bible is for me it will happen so what are we doing through the prayer we are battling against our egos pray pride all the capital sins that is inside of us the more you are unholy the more you may have to pray the more you have all these weaknesses the more you have love to pray through all this prayer we should change many people their prayer life is going on strong but life is not changed they will continue praying like this till the end of their life nothing will happen in their life because this prayer life is not effective the intention of prayer life is not taking place in their life let's read uh, 26 27 26 in the battle of prayer in the battle of prayer we must face in ourselves we must face in ourselves and around us and around us erroneous notions of prayer erroneous notions of there prayer there are so many wrong informations about prayer you may face in fact prayer is a battle against ourselves but there will be so many erroneous notions of prayer erroneous notions means wrong notions of prayer some people view prayer as a simple psychological activity some people view prayer as a simple psychological activity that is a wrong act- attitude you know there some people think oh it's all psychological it's just praying like this and nothing happens so it's a psychological activity just by praying you feel that there is a god who will listen and then it will get some consolation so they consider prayer life as a psychological activity others as an effort of concentration to reach a mental void others some, as an effort of concentration to reach a mental some void some people have got emptiness in their mind so they are concentrating featuring pictureizing jesus and like a yoga 
doing meditation all these kind of thing and think okay this emptiness will be filled with this attitude that is also wrong that is not what prayer life is these are erroneous notions erroneous notions of prayer still others reduce prayer to ritual words and postures some people let's repeat still others still others reduce prayer reduce prayer to ritual words to ritual and words postures. and postures some people say when you pray you have to pray like this this prayer should be there this word should be there this should be the position this should be the postures and all these this should be, you have to stand in the line you have to stand like this there should be a decorum the dress code this 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 these things but no connection too much of in, in insisting on ritual aspects of the words and postures i've seen many times it happens in the marriage celebrate some celebrations in the church the po- lot of lot of training lot of practices how to come where to come which position how to bow down where to go which one to pray who has to come where to stand all the details very good but no connection if the devotion is not encouraged the connection with jesus is missing all these practices are just mere ritual and postures useless there is no prayer that will have no effect is not i'm saying it is catechism of the catholic church 27 27 26 praise the lord praise the lord and many christians unconsciously many christians unconsciously regard prayer regard prayer as an occupation as an occupation that is incompatible with all the other things that is incompatible with other things things they have to do things they have to do and they don't have time they don't have time praise the lord praise the lord so some people think prayer is a occupation a duty since we have so many other duty this duty have no time many people think prayer life is a duty you know you me when you go for work you will have so many responsibilities and then many things you will be able to fulfill many things will not be able to fulfill the same way we have too many work and in that work this work this prayer life is also considered as a work and therefore they so oh, i don't have time to pray so that means it is one among many work that you are supposed to do and by the, by the time you came to prayer you have no time so many people unconsciously regard prayer as an occupation prayer is not an occupation it is a battle praise the lord praise the lord those who seek god those who seek god by prayer by prayer are quickly discouraged are quickly discouraged because because they do not know with the not that prayer comes also from the holy spirit that prayer comes also and from not the holy from spirit. themselves alone and not from themselves some alone some people pray thinking that if i pray i will get holy spirit if i pray i will get connected to i will i will be blessed by god they are seeking god by prayer remember if you are praying to get god you will never get it but remember you are praying because of god then you will be blessed praise the lord praise that the lord that means already holy spirit is in you that is why you are praying it is not that you don't have holy spirit so you are praying and getting it that is a wrong attitude praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord that means i cannot do anything by by your my own if i'm doing good that is means god is already active in me praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus so this is very important my dear brothers and sisters to know all these factors about bible for example in the old testament the covenant is written on the stones and given to us covenant is written in the stones and given to us in the new testament covenant is put inside of us old testament since the covenant the law constitution is outside their body there is army police to control you and say obey this obey this obey this otherwise we will put you in behind the bars then everyone will be obedient that is old testament in new testament there is no police no uh, no soldiers nobody to control you there is a f- inner force controlling you from inside for example in the old testament if somebody has to do good because there is a king waiting with the wo- sword and he is waiting for you if you make a mistake he will kill you 
so you will do obedient not because inside you want to be obedient but because you are forced to obey because there is a rule outside you have to follow it because there is a police there is a king to control that is old testament but in the new testament new covenant the rule and regulations are put inside the holy spirit is inside therefore we don't need a police from outside to control us threaten us make us pray inside we will pray from inside there is a force i cannot but i have to pray today even if i'm so busy i will find out a time to pray even if i want to enjoy i see if i see a poor person i i have to help them i cannot escape i have to be compassionate i don't know what is something is forcing me from inside that is what we call the new covenant praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord so for some people it is an occupation controlled by members outside because that means there there is no prayer life the real prayer means it is coming from inside let's read la, the last part once again so many christians and those who seek god by prayer are quickly discouraged those who seek god by prayer are quickly discouraged they do not know that prayer comes also from the holy spirit because they do not know that prayer not comes from also from the holy alone. spirit and not from themselves praise alone. the lord praise the lord so in the prayer you will have a inner force in self you feel like praying you feel like connecting god you cannot sleep without prayer without connecting to god you feel like if you don't pray you feel something is missing you are missing someone and you are connecting that is from inside you don't need anybody to force you that means god is already in you but the old testament attitude i mean the, the other people attitude they don't have any connection but they are forcing themselves to pray thinking that some connection will happen that is not real prayer praise the lord praise the lord let's continue reflecting about the catechism of the catholic church and its teaching about the prayer we read ccc 2728 finally finally a battle a battle has to confront has to confront what we experience what we experience as failure in prayer as failure in prayer so we have to confront everything that's failing us in prayer for example many of us we failed in our prayer because we are discouraged in prayer so that means we have to battle against discouragement and many of us we are failing in prayer because we have no time that means we have to battle against lack of time so discouragement during periods of dryness sadness that because we have great possessions we have not given all to the lord that means we have to battle against our possessions anybody say i have no time to pray that means you have possessions what is the possessions you have many other important points important things in your life that is why you don't have time for god because there has many other important things more important things than god you have that is your possession sometimes we don't feel like discouragement in prayer because you have certain ideologies ideas in your mind which is your weakness your possession that we have to battle against praise the lord praise the lord some people they are not able to pray because there is a dryness so there is a reason for this dryness that is your possession some people when you pray your distraction so many unnecessary thoughts that means these are your possessions what are you thinking about what are you disturbed about what are you collecting in your mind these are your possessions great possessions so we have to battle against these possessions that means these possessions we have not given to god we are holding it that is why we are not able to pray praise the lord praise the lord so my dear brothers and sisters we all have lot of possessions that is why we are so rich rich people will en- never enter into heaven because we have so many possessions disappointment over not being heard according to our own will some people we wanted this job to be received you know you go for an interview you want this interview to be passed but god has a better plan 
and you don't get this interview pass and then get discouragement and disappointed because you want everything to be done according to your own will and the other other one which are the these are possessions our own will should be done is a possession second wounded pride is a possession stiffened by the indignity that is ours as a sinner so uh, you, you feel some kinds of some people oh i am a sinner my prayer will never be heard we are so stiffened by this idea idea of us being a sinner so that is also a possession our resistance to the idea that prayer is a free and unmerited gift so resistance so prayer is a gift and some people they don't accept this that is also in possession and so forth the conclusion is always the same what good does it to do to pray to overcome these obstacles we must battle to gain humility trust and perseverance so our battle is to get humility trust and perseverance which happens in the prayer life when i kneel down and lift my hands i'm humbling myself i'm trusting in god and i'm persevering in my prayer life the moment i stop kneeling down and lifting up the hands i say i'm declaring my pride i don't need god second i don't need to trust him third i'm tired so anyone who pray that means they are humble they are trusting in god they are persevering anyone doesn't want to pray they have pride they don't trust in god they are tired they don't want to persevere therefore to overcome these battle uh, obstacles we must battle through prayer Lord, thank you jesus thank you jesus let's read ccc 2729 let's read this word of god catechism of the catholic church chapter 27 was uh, uh, chapter 2 the paragraph number 2729 the habitual difficulty in prayer is distraction the habitual difficulty in prayer is distraction so i've told you already two things are the main problems one is distraction the other one is dryness so all these things are whatever that we are preaching and sharing with you is supported by the catechism of the catholic church so the habitual difficulty in prayer is distraction it can affect words and their meaning in vocal prayer it can affect words and their meaning in vocal prayer it can affect words and meaning means when when you are praying hail mary holy mary prayer if you are distracted you don't understand the meaning of it you don't understand what you are praying sometimes we the whole community start with the the gen the, i remember once there was a prayer meeting was going on the the men started how far the prayer and the uh, uh, give us this day the second part the women start praying and are at the end after five six uh, hail mary suddenly when they noticed at uh, when uh, at the last prayer hail mary supposed to be men praying but i don't know what happened in between somewhere it is just became opposite and nobody noticed everyone was in deep somewhere else so in between men is supposed to say the hail mary but they said the holy mary and women who are supposed to say hail holy mary they started saying hail mary but they didn't know because the whole crowd was in another world so this can happen that is why habitual difficulty in prayer is distraction it can affect words and their meaning in vocal prayer praise the lord praise the lord it can concern it can concern more profoundly more profoundly him to whom we are praying him to whom we are praying so that it means we don't even bother whom he, the person for whom to whom we are praying that means we don't even think of the presence of jesus in there if you are praying our father prayer we don't even think of jesus presence there because our mind is somewhere else it can concern more profoundly him to whom we are praying in vocal prayer liturgical or personal whether it's holy mass or personal prayer in the vocal prayer if you don't understand the meaning focus or attention is not there if you are distraction then you are not praying to jesus 
meditation and contemplation in all these meditation liturgical vocal prayer meditation contemplation if all in all these things if you are focused not focused this distracted is dangerous praise the lord praise the lord to set about hunting down distractions would be to fall into their trap some people they are trying to okay i am not going to be distracted today i am not going to be distracted so they are fighting against the distractions you are trying to hunt down the distraction in this process of hunting down distraction you are already distracted that is why bible says to the catechism of the catholic church says to set about hunting down distractions would be to fall into their trap when all that is necessary to turn back to our heart so is not about mind in the prayer if you are trying to okay i'm not going to be distracted today i'm not going to think about anybody else i'm not th- going to think about my husband i'm not going to think about my family problem when you are saying like this you are thinking about all those things that means already distracted so that is why bible says, the catechism of the, the catholic church there is no point in attacking the distraction change from your mind come to the heart lord i love you i feel your presence here that heart come from the mind come to the heart and relate for a distraction reveals to us what we are attached to so if you are distracted about your children that means you are attached to children if you are distracted about your appearance you are attracted attached to appearance if you are distraction about and uh, some wrong things and then you are attached to the wrong things if your distraction is ima- imagining something and that means that is your attachment distraction reveals to us what we are attached to and this humble awareness before the lord should awaken our preferential love for him and lead us resolutely to offer him our heart to be purified when you know these distractions reveals that these are our weaknesses and attachment then we humble ourselves lord i'm so sorry i never knew that these are the, these things are destroying me these are the attachments because these are the my distractions i'm so sorry lord i am i g- repent about all these things that means distraction becomes a prayer and you are com- coming to your heart from mind to to heart and then it becomes a filial love there is a love preferential love for him and lead us resolutely to offer him our heart to be purified then we say lord i'm so sorry we bow down we cry and beg for forgiveness and say lord i'm sorry i have these distractions that means i am attached to these please help me you are coming to your heart from mind to heart then your distraction becomes a big powerful prayer therein lies the battle the choice of which master to serve so we have to serve one master if you think distraction is more in given importance that means we are serving that master and then if you are making distraction into a prayer and humbling yourself and coming to the heart means you are serving god so which master whom do you want to serve thank jesus. you father jesus praise jesus. the lord oh, praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters we saw about distraction which is written in the catechism of the catholic church now let's read catechism of the catholic church 2731 another difficulty another difficulty especially especially for those who sincerely want to pray for those who sincerely want to pray is dryness is dryness dryness belongs to contemplative prayer dryness belongs to contemplative when prayer when the heart is separated from god when the heart is separated from god with no taste for thoughts with no taste for thoughts memories memories and feelings and feelings even spiritual ones even spiritual ones so this is what the catechism of the catholic church speaks about dryness dryness belong when you enter into contemplative prayer that is first is vocal prayer then meditation and then slowly you enter into the contemplative prayer that is when the dryness comes that is an a testing period dryness spiritual dryness you feel your heart is separated from god you feel god is left you god has left you suddenly you feel oh i committed some sin i don't feel anything no taste for thoughts you don't feel like thinking you don't want to think about it. no memories no feelings not even spiritual ones that kind of dryness comes you feel even if you go to the chapel you would just sit there you don't feel like doing anything 
and you don't even feel like praying uh, you don't even feeling like sleeping too so this is a kind of spiritual dryness which we will speak about in this coming days and how the how we recognize and identify and how to overcome all these kind of things we'll discuss in this coming days praise the lord praise let's the lord. continue reading this is the moment of sheer faith clinging faithfully to jesus in his agony and his tomb this is the moment of sheer faith clinging faithfully to jesus in his agony and in his so tomb. how when you experience dryness for example vocal prayer you used to pray a lot and you used to feel emotionally devotion everything and you used to spend a lot of time in prayer you used to meditate you used to reflect you used to repeat the word of god everything went on well and then you entered into contemplative prayer that that different grades higher grades of prayer and that is when the dryness comes when the dryness comes many people normally they give up prayer and then after some time they attend a retreat or something and then again start with the vocal prayer again they feeling the emotion feelings and all these things and continue for some time and after some time as they are going to about to enter into the higher grade of prayer suddenly dryness comes and then when the dryness comes they feel god they lost anointing they lost everything and therefore they will give up and then again going back to square one so this cycle is going on first grade second grade third grade before we go to the third grade we go back to the first grade again going with second and go it's like the climbing the steps and jumping from there and again climbing the step we are not growing up because of dryness but dryness spiritual dryness there are two three types of dryness which we will reflect tomorrow so the dryness can be of many reasons if it is spiritual dryness it every one has to face this spiritual dryness whether you are a good holy person a saint whether you, you are as beginner or whoever may be are you need to experience dryness spiritual dryness after some time of your prayer life you will experience spiritual dryness not because you are a sinner not because you committed sin not because you have something wrong if you have something done wrong of course you will have another dryness that is a result of the sin but most of the cases who are holy who are prayerful they have not in fall into any addictions or bad habits still they experience dryness that is an examination that is a testing period for them so how to overcome the dryness it is written in the catechism of the catholic church this is the moment of sheer faith that means when you experience dryness in your spiritual life total faith you need what does it mean okay now i don't have any feeling no emotion no anointing no presence of good, nothing but i believe god is here i believe he is holding me i believe he carrying me therefore even if i don't feel anything i will continue praying because that is the moment of agony of jesus when jesus was going through this dryness he said father have you forgotten me he cried that is a spiritual dryness why have you forsaken me is an extreme agony of jesus but he said but my i surrender my spirit unto you total surrender total faith though he doesn't feel anything he surrendered that is the only way we can overcome the dryness that is why the catechism of the catholic church unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies it remains alone but if it dies it bears much fruit if dryness is due to the lack of roots because the word has fallen on, on rocky soil the battle requires conversion some people the dryness is not because the spiritual testing but because they are already some evil or some kind of wrong things or some attachment to the worldly things or something is still affecting them that is why they have dryness in such cases they need a conversion but in many other spiritual persons who are holy who have completely changed and leading a good life no bad habits no addictions nothing no ego no attachment to this world no selfishness no pride but still they have dryness that means they are going through the get so many experience of their life 